Hey there everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'll be walking you through a full maintenance routine for the Bamboo Labs P1S printer. I will also include an overview guide in the description below. You can quickly use it to see which tasks need to be completed for monthly, quarterly, or when needed. If you forget how to complete that task, you can use the video chapters to jump to that section. Keeping your printer in tip-top condition ensures great prints and long-lasting performance, so let's dive right in. First things first, we need to vacuum out our enclosure to get rid of any dust and filament particles. Trust me, I've seen videos where the bottom of the enclosure looks like a war zone. Don't be that person. Grab a vacuum, turn off the machine, and give the interior a good cleaning. This quick step keeps everything neat and prevents buildup that could affect your prints. Next, let's go ahead and lubricate the idler pulley. Now this isn't something that you have to do all the time. Usually you'll start to notice a squeaking noise when the extruder changes direction. Believe me, when you hear it, you'll know. It's the perfect cue to give it some lube. I use a special lube bottle that looks like a hummingbird's beak. Seriously, it's super precise. Carefully apply the lubricant above and below the pulley, but be careful not to get any on the belt. That's really important. Be sure to hit both the left and the right pulley. Once that is done, go ahead and give the tool head a few forward and backward movements to ensure everything is lubed up. Now for the carbon rods. Once a month, I check for dust or any buildup on them. To clean them, you'll need a 2mm Allen wrench to loosen the idler pulley screws on the back of the printer. Spray some isopropyl alcohol onto a microfiber cloth and gently wipe down the rods. Please don't use a spray bottle on this step. Keep wiping them until they are completely clean. After that, move the gantry back and forth a few times to make sure everything's running smoothly. Once that's done, tighten down your idler pulley screws and you're ready to move on to the next step. Every three months, it's time to check the grease on the Z-axis lead screws. Start by moving the bed all the way down. You'll want to first clean the screws using IPA and a microfiber cloth. I recommend printing this little grease tool that you can find on Maker World. I'll add a link in the description below where you can find it. Also, be sure to check out all the new grease tools that are on Maker World. There's a bunch. I apply a thick layer of grease to ensure full coverage, then remove excess after. If that doesn't fit your style, then apply a thinner layer. That way you won't have any excess grease. To each his own. Once you're done applying grease for the first time, move the bed all the way up and back down. Make sure you do this twice to get a solid, even coat. My second coat is always very thin, applying to sections that look like they've been missed. Greasing these screws ensures the bed moves up and down smoothly. Time to move on to the rods. The X and Y linear rods need some attention as well. This is another monthly check. Use IPA and a microfiber cloth to wipe down the rods first. Be careful to avoid getting any IPA on the bearings and pulleys, especially on the Z axis. Once they're clean, apply some super lube to the cloth and wipe down the rods with a light even coat. Again, avoid getting any lube on the pulleys. This will keep everything moving smoothly. Next up, the extruder. Let's go ahead and clean any debris buildup. Remove the front cover and use any canned air to blow out any dust or particles that have built up. Keeping the extruder clean is key to avoiding jams. Don't forget to clean the dust out of the extruder fan as well. I have seen people completely skip this step. While you've got the canned air out, let's go ahead and take care of the enclosure fans. Use the canned air to blow out any dust or debris that may have been collected. Make sure you get both the auxiliary part cooling fan on the inside of the enclosure and the chamber fan on the rear of the enclosure. Quick and easy. Next, give the camera a quick wipe using IPA damped microfiber cloth and keep those time lapses looking nice and clean. Now let's go ahead and move on to the filament cutter. If it's time to replace it, first remove the extruder cover and disconnect it so you're not having to battle with it. Then with a 1.5 millimeter Allen wrench, remove the screw on the cutter arm. The printer actually comes with two cutter replacements, so you can use those. Once the Allen is removed, carefully slide the old cutter out and replace it. Line the cutter up with the horizontal hole that it came out from. While holding the cutter arm in, tighten back in the Allen screw. 
If you print a lot of color changes, then the blade will definitely wear out quick. I recommend checking it once every 6 to 12 months depending on your use, of course. Next is the nozzle wiper. The printer comes with three replacements, so when the current one is worn out, you can grab one of those. Use a 2mm Allen wrench to remove the old one and install the new wiper. Once the old one is removed, I like to screw the Allen into the new wiper just about 3 quarters of a turn to hold it in place. Then I place the wiper back over the installation screw hole and tighten it back down. Next up is the silicone sock. I've already had to replace mine once before. Over time it started to get a lot of buildup, and even though I'd pick at it to remove the gunk, it got to the point where it just wasn't deflecting hot filament anymore. After removing the silicone sock on this unit, I noticed that it had a rip in it, so it was perfect time to replace. When replacing the sock back on, I like to put it on backwards, then rotate it around to allow the little silicone arms to fully wrap around the entire hot end at the top. Once done, replace the extruder cover and you're good to go. And the last step, I recommend running a calibration test. With these maintenance steps, your P1S will keep running smoothly and producing amazing prints. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll be forever in your debt. Stay tuned for more 3D printing tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy printing.